Good afternoon to everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to all the participants uh, to this uh, webinar. Today uh, we will hear and discuss uh, about the benefit of sharing content with Europeana. This webinar is organized within the Europeana DSI initiative by, by the Michael Culture Association. The Michael Culture Association manages the Museo Hub Aggregator, uh, one of the trusted aggregators, uh, partners of Europeana. My name is Maria Teresa Natale. I'm responsible and the contact point for uh, this aggregator. The Museo Hub uh, is a reference point for European museums and other cultural institutions hosting museum collections in the field of digital cultural heritage and uh, aggregation for uh, Europeana. Museo Hub uh, provides uh, services, good practices, training, help desk, uh, documentation, updating on digital JSON standards, aggregations, uh, IPR and reuse, multilingual disman terminologies, digital exhibitions, uh, and uh, uh, storytelling. So it uh, is like a bridge for museums or other cultural institutions who want to join Europeana, other uh, new museums, either those who want to update uh, or add new data sets. Uh, and uh, moreover, we help museums to aggregate better quality digital content using the Mint uh, techno technology. Uh, today, uh, we will listen to the experience of different uh, types uh, of institutions, uh, uh, members of the Michael Culture Association, which uh, shared uh, part of their digital collections uh, with uh, Europeana, uh, sometimes uh, using uh, uh, Museo. So, uh, the first um, person we will listen to today is uh, the, about the experience uh, uh, of uh, a museum. Uh, she is Vesna Loric Plantic. She works uh, at the Museum of Art and Craft in Zagreb, uh, Croatia. She is the head of uh, clocks and watches collection and the head of collection department. And in particular, she is also project manager for U Project, where the museum is partner. She participates in projects like Partage Plus, Atina Plus, European Archaeology, etc. So, Vesna, why are the benefits to share content with Europeana? So, first of all, I'll try to share content with you till my presentation. Uh, do you see it? Perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, hello everybody uh first of all i would just like to to say a few facts about our museum prior to my presentation just to to have an idea uh, what kind of museum it is it's an it's a very um, old museum and one of the most prominent museums in croatia it was founded in uh 140 years ago, and as you can see, our collections vary from various uh, applied art collections to art collections such as painting, sculpture, architecture, etc. In total, about 100,000 museum objects from 13th century until the present day. Uh, one thing. I would like to stress too, and I'm not uh, sure whether everybody is familiar with it, is that uh, a year ago, uh, Zagreb was struck by the strong earthquake, mm -hmm. and uh, our building and uh, many objects mm -hmm. were severely damaged because it's an old building uh, built uh, at the same time as the museum was founded for that purpose. So it looks like this. And uh, I think this, in addition to this uh, COVID pandemia situation is one of the reasons why it is very important that we have a major part of our collections online. 
So uh, as Maria Teresa already stated, uh, we participated in several uh, EU projects, uh, which uh, uploaded uh, during which we uploaded our content to Europeana. First of which was the Partage Plus, uh, which was dealing with Art Nouveau. And uh, as you can see, lots of uh, European countries participated. And uh, as for our media, we uploaded uh, more than 5,000 records. Those were the first records we uploaded to Europeana. And uh, there, they were not only from our collections, but we also coordinated and had cooperation with uh, more than 60 Croatian museums, libraries, archives, and private collections. Uh, so it was a very, very sophisticated and good project. I think uh, the the most important outcome of it, in addition to upload the digital contents to Europeana, was that uh, multilingual control vo vocabularies were created during the project. On object types, uh, refining object types, materials, techniques, uh, so on. And for that project, uh, we received the annual award of the Croatian Museum Association because uh, they appreciate very much that we participated and that we cooperated with so many uh, cultural institutions on that project. Mm -hmm. We also have a portal that content. And the second project was Athena Plus that started uh, a year later and then the uh, which had the main goal of uh, uploading and sharing the uh, large quantity of uh, new records uh, with Europeana. And uh, that occasion, we uploaded uh, more than 50,000 records. And, uh, if you remember, uh, the, the whole uh, holding is uh, about 100,000. So it's uh, Half of our total object, of our total collections. So mm -hmm. it was very, very important to do it become visible. I have this diagram that we uh, can see uh, the number of uh, people who, number of users, let's say in the, in the past year. Uh, it's about uh, two two thousand on average each month, and uh, more than twenty two thousand total in in a year, and uh, more than thirty thousand sessions. So I think it's a great result for our museum. Uh, the third project, uh, EU project uh, we participated in and the dealing with uh, digitization and uh, sharing content with Europeana was the Europeana archaeology that just ended several few months ago. And as you know, and as you could see, uh, we are not an archaeological museum, but we have uh, architecture, mainly historic buildings. And uh, so we, we uploaded, we aggregated his, his historic buildings. Uh, one of the aims was to, to increase quality of the existing records. Those were the records uh, dealing with that team, the historic buildings. We already aggregated through Partage Plus, through Athena Plus projects. So we increased quality of the, those records. Namely, we added by adding keywords, descriptions, links to 
AAT antigen dinosauri. We also put geolocations in each and every record. And we translated the, the main terms into English, which is very important when uh, searching for the objects. And also, we also, we also licensed species of creative commons. Uh, most of them, I think, BYSA. I think all the records have that license. And in addition to that, we added new high quality content, nearly 800 records. So through the project, we uh, uploaded to Europeana uh, to 2,756 records. So uh, through the by participating in those three projects, uh, we uploaded to Europeana a total of uh, sixty thousand records, which is more than half. It's uh, more than half of our total uh, objects. So I think it's very good, <laughs> excellent. Uh, I already stated some benefits of sharing the content. So it's, of course, increased visibility of uh, museum collections because everybody in the world can, can see them and they are meant for everybody, from scholars to, to ordinary people. And as, as I already <laughs> said, it's uh, especially important under circumstances, circumstances uh, such as uh, pandemic and uh, this earthquake situation, when we have to move all our collections and our, our holdings to, a temp to some temporary location. Uh, I, I took the example of, uh, let's say, the collection of photos. Yeah. <clears throat> one of our uh, very important collections and the uh, curators said that they had around two queries a year before and after the collection was uploaded to Europeana it's about 70 queries a year and they don't have uh, such questions as some descriptions and uh, the photo shows this or that, but uh, very exact. Uh, where is uh, like the uh, inventory number of the photograph and so forth. I want to to to, to take a very a very interesting example, uh, and it is about the restorers from Ukraine. Uh, from uh, Lviv, from the city of Lviv, they um, many facades uh, facades were uh, ruined the last war, and they a uh, few years ago uh, were, uh, uh, did a renovation of uh, many facades facades that were ruined, and uh, and uh, they saw the Europeana brochure with the color samples for them. Uh, it, that brochure was made uh, at the turn of the 20th century in Vienna. They uh, asked us if they can use them and if it can help them uh, know what kind of colors were used at that period. And we all of course, we helped them, and uh, they also wrote, wrote uh, a, a work on that theme, on the polychromy of the facades in La Wings. And also, so they thank uh, my my colleague, who is the head of design collection. So it's one of the examples how there's a, a, a 
benefit of uh, being online and uh, being on the Ghana platform. Uh, however, I would like to, to stress some, some problems. Uh, mostly, uh, let's, let's see uh, one of the things uh, that's uh, on Europana <coughs> is uh, the aggregator. The aggregator uh, is mostly a project within which the, the records uh, are uh, uploaded. So it's Athena Plus, let's say, and Partage Plus, but then instead of uh, uh, Elfana archaeology, it's just this. Um, this refers to, to the platform of uh, the aggregator we had. So I don't know, something happens. So it's not the Elfana archaeology, but this. Uh, the other thing is, uh, the topics on Europeana, there are topics like archaeology, art, fashion. And we and if we go to archaeology, and if we clicked on Croatia, so that's the number of the items we we uploaded uh, through Europeana archaeology project. We come to buildings, historic buildings. And they certainly don't belong to archaeology, but they were automatically put on archaeology because they were created through uh, the European archaeology project. Uh, the other thing is we had a topic art. Topic art, and then it, uh, it means paintings, drawings, uh, sculptures, engraving. And also, when we click on Croatia, uh, we get this as a result. So shoes, knives, ceramics, figurine. So I don't know, uh, yeah, what happened that they they are mentioned in the art section. On the other hand, uh, when I click on the fashion, we, we have no results. Although we have fashion on the Europeana, but I think uh, this fashion refers only to the to the records uh, aggregated through the project, through the certain project uh, project. Not uh, it doesn't contain fashion that is on Europeana, but uh, that was aggregated through uh, one project and it can be misleading I think so I, I wanted to think of something about possible solutions of those problems I think uh, uh, one of the great things would be that we have translations for for our objects so not Japanese but uh, uh, pocket watch uh, uh, at least the English translation. So it would make uh, uh, the search more, more easy, I suppose. And uh, the important thing is also to, to, to add geolocation. Because uh, uh, I've seen some things that uh, if we don't have a geolocation that uh, Geolocation is put automatically, and if it concerns Croatia, it's put some somewhere in the middle of of Croatia, so it it can also be misleading. So the great thing uh, 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 with the European archaeology project uh, was that we actually had to to add geolocations. That's very very important. Uh, those are some questions I put myself uh, because I don't know whether it's possible or no, and it is whether it's possible to change data that are uploaded and without re-aggregation. So, 
to 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 just change data in some records, not to uh, reaggregate the whole lot because there are many wrong information or there are some new results uh, of new research. And uh, one of the problem is uh, the copyright status. <clears throat> Until the European archaeology, our records were marked as not reusable. That's very convenient. I know when we tried to, to, to make a gallery and a digital exhibition uh, in the European archaeology project, we couldn't use some of our records because they are uh, marked as non reusable. And we would very much like to change that. This is, for example, that can be used, but it was uh, aggregated through European archaeology. While this, for example, this purse was uh, aggregated through uh, Athena Plus project, it can't be used. So it's a pity because uh, uh, lots of our uh, objects are old, very old, and uh, there is no copyright then, so they could be reused. And I think uh, one of the important things would be, and we are, we started to to, to do it, uh, is uh, desired. So I, I'm a part of the team that are uh, working on that, that work on that. We are doing, for example, desires of techniques, materials on uh, some other subjects. And I think it would be necessary, if possible, to have an administrator in the institution who could then uh, be a connection to the Europeana and uh, be responsible to update or change the, the, the wrong information or to change this uh, copyright or things like that. In addition to European administrators, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vesna, for uh, your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, we see that uh, it is not easy to aggregate content for the Europeana, and even if we try to enrich, to improve the data, there are still uh, some problems and, uh, and that must be solved. Uh, so now I give uh, the floor to the second speaker, uh, and we will uh, listen to the experience of the University Gallery. And um, uh, I invite to speak uh, Julia Catona. She is an art historian, curator, and head of collection of the Scola Graffiti's art collection in the High School of Visual Art of the Hungarian University of Fi Fine Arts. So uh, please uh, tell us the experience uh, of your university gallery. Hello for everyone. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, for this invitation and the possibility to, to share our experiences um, with this public. So, um, as, um, as Maria Teresa introduced me, so I'm an art historian, curator and researcher. And uh, since 2014, I've been working as the head of this kind of special uh, education related collection called School of Graphic Design Art Collection. And uh, for the very, very first, um, uh, let me introduce just with a few words on our collection, because it quite, <laughs> I wouldn't say, absolutely unique, but special. I mean, the status and the situation itself, quite uh, uh, special. So I'm trying to share my presentation like this. Do you see? Yeah. Yes. Okay, a moment. Like this. Okay, so uh, this is it. Um, 
So um, our collection actually is a really very special museum collection, which belongs to Hungary's oldest national art education institution. And uh, so it is called currently as a high school of visual arts. And this school is, a, is an organic part of the Hungarian University, uh, Hungarian University of Fine Arts in, in Budapest. Uh, so our institution, uh, originally called Scuola Graphidis Budensis, Buddha Drawing School in English, so it was founded on the basis of Maria Teresa's um, educational decree, uh, the Ratio Educationis, uh, in 1778, um, at the very end uh, of the 18th century, and it was founded by the Buddha Chancellery. Therefore, the collections, um, uh, all this, um, sorry, so therefore the collection, the collection, um, uh, all these uh, uh, objects uh, are from the second half of the 18th century, and the collection's uh, spectrum extends uh, to the end of the Second World War and a bit after uh, the 1950s and 1960s. And uh, actually, we, we collect and uh, conserve uh, steel objects and drawings uh, from even the 19, uh, 1960s as well. So regarding the object types, um, our collection is uh, very mixed and compound since um, we collect and conserve and study and present um, uh, real and online, not only fi fine art works, uh, which can be connected um, to the schools uh, uh, and their successors' um, uh, history, but uh, so we also collect um, and conserve and study and inventory uh, applied arts works as well, technical objects, it is very special, uh, books and, and uh, archival materials as well. So this slide is um, only uh, from, uh, from our very first exhibition, uh, from the time, from the year when we joined uh, uh, the Athena Plus project. And this was very, <laughs> our very, very first exhibition in the, sa in the sa same year. So um, the collection structure uh, made of uh, altogether eight collections, uh, so eight uh, collection parts. So uh, in which uh, uh, the first is the collection of uh, prints and drawings from the 18th century to the mid, mid uh, 20th century. And the next one is the collection of plaster casts and sculptures, uh, mainly uh, from the very end of the 19th century and the very beginning of the 20th century. The next one is the photographic collection and media tech, uh, mainly uh, from the 19th century, since, um, uh, since the Department of Photography um, was established um, and um, started in 1914, in the first year of the uh, First World War. And so we have a very, very nice um, uh, collection of, um, um, of, this, of uh, this department. So the next one and the smaller one is the ceramics and glass collection. Then um, the collection of metalworks and textiles, furnitures, and leather objects. Sorry. And the next one is the uh, collection of technical objects. And we have a very nice rare book collections with uh, special uh, ornamental and architectural prints, mainly uh, from the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. And uh, finally, so we have a very nice archival material, so, and we, we would like to, to manage it um, and treat it um, uh, as a whole collection of, uh, of, the, um, of the school's past uh, from the 18th century to the mid 20th century. So the, the whole uh, collection consists of uh, approximately 50,000 objects and even more. So because um, uh, when we joined the Athena Plus project in 2015, 2015, so we started the, the inventory uh, of the collection objects um, uh, in this year. 
And uh, since then, so we had a really very nice uh, progress um, in, <laughs> in study and inventory and digitize uh, uh, the whole collections, but we haven't finished yet. And so uh, since uh, we count uh, um, uh, the ornamental and architectural prints uh, for especially uh, used for educational purposes, and um, it means that it is at least 30,000 uh, pieces. So we, we, we can just estimate um, uh, uh, the volume of the whole collection. And what is very, really, really uh, important to, to tell and say, and um, it's um, a kind of a general, general um, uh, thing, that in 2018, after a really long administrative and professional process, the whole collection gained an overall, overall cultural heritage protection from the um, Prime Ministry of Hungary. And as the only whole educational collection in Hungary. So and it is quite unique here because only just a few local collections um, of uh, certain universities, certain departments get uh, uh, this cultural heritage protection and our collection get the whole protection uh, for the whole collection. And um, I think it's, um, it's a kind of gap in the cultural heritage um, uh, protection um, uh, landscape, not just on, not, not only in Hungary, but um, I suppose then in other countries as well, that um, uh, since um, uh, many museum collections in universities, in colleges and in schools um, uh, should uh, um, sh should be treated and should be managed um, uh, in the same way uh, like museum collections in museums because the museum objects are the same so they, uh, they, they should be treated um, the same way. So. Uh, we try to to keep keep this way, and we will see. But I suppose that um, it's a, it's a kind of a cultural heritage gap um, in many other countries, not just in Hungary. So for us, as a little um, but unique um, uh, educational uh, collection, so the European cooperations uh, um, were um, how, how to say so. So it was for us, it was a really breakthrough. So uh, for a small collection uh, like like our collection, so we had two cooperations with Europeana. One was the frame in the in the framework of the Athena Plus uh, Plus project in, in two thousand. 2015 and 2016, and the other was a, particip a participation directly in the annual season project of Europeana in 2017. So, uh, firstly, uh, in 2015, um, when we joined, as I mentioned, when we joined the Athena Plus project, we were at the beginning of uh, the digital inventory and study of our collection objects. Um, so it was it was a kind of uh, push <laughs> and uh, uh, force power uh, to our collection work, um, and and a really very very strong uh, uh, input. Um. So therefore, we had to prioritize. Um, so what we wanted to publish and what we wanted to show uh, first, first and from our collection, from our collections to the European public. So finally, we decided to provide digital records of three main object types. Um, uh, the first uh, uh, group of object group of objects uh, was the drawings um, uh, from the collection of uh, prints and drawings. So um, I just um, um, pasted uh, some uh, um, some screenshots uh, from the European uh, platform. And these are actually these are um, so this, this is a selection of uh, our uh, earliest uh, drawings uh, from the collection from the 18th century, uh, late 18th, 18th century, and uh, from the very beginning of the 19th century. And uh, the other uh, group of objects um, uh, was uh, was the group of uh, historical object uh, photographs uh, from the photographic and um, 
collection and media tech. So it is interesting. It is interesting because, so as I mentioned, the, the Department of Photography uh, started to work on and was established in 1914, and uh, it is quite. It was quite rare to 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 conserve and to find anyhow uh, these objects uh, from the 19. Uh, tens and twenties uh, uh, from the period of the two uh, between the two uh, world wars so but we got a very very nice collection of uh, of this period as well and uh, we also have um, quite a lot of um, uh, uh, photographic study from the 1950s and 1960s as you can see here and the third uh, main object type, type uh, was um, was uh, was a group of architectural and ornamental prints uh, from our rare book collection. So the volume of records provided was more than three thousand, and uh, so it um, so it, it doesn't sound uh, too much. It, so it is true, it is not too much. But uh, regarding that, it was our first year that uh, <clears throat> um, uh, in in our collections life actually. So it was a really a really nice result, I think. And um, please, additionally, so we also provided them um, in a, a small project um, uh, connected to this Athena Plus project, um, uh, this uh, 100 high quality rec records. Um, as um, uh, Vesna mentioned, uh, this project also. So some of the institutions um, uh, provided um, uh, highlight 100 highlighted uh, uh, high quality <coughs> records. So and we also participated in this in this project. Um, so it was the very, very first um, European uh, cooperation or contribution, and we are very thankful <laughs> to be uh, the part of it. And um, and um, and the next one uh, was um, in 2017 when we could join uh, directly to the European Art, and it was the Art Nouveau season uh, season project um, organized by uh, Douglas McCarthy from Europeana. So he's he's also uh, an art historian, and uh, he invited our collection to to participate in in this project. And um, um, I would say that it, it was the, the very direct uh, impact and benefit uh, of, uh, of the contents provided previously in the Athena Plus project. Um, so um, this, the European Art has launched its uh, Art Nouveau Season project on, um, in February uh, 20, uh, 2017, and during this uh, project, um, European art um, uh, focused on contents relating uh, uh, to the influential art movement um, of the turn of the 19th and uh, 20th uh, centuries. The participants um, uh, of the project were Albertina from Wien, Aveiro City Museum, uh, Le Réseau Art Nouveau Network, Museo Nacional de Catalunya. Uh, the Hungarian Museum of uh, Applied Arts uh, from Budapest, uh, Museum für Kunst und Gewerbe from Hamburg, and Museum Kunstpalast, uh, Museum Narodove from Warsaw, uh, Scuola Grafidis Art Collection, it is us, uh, from Budapest, and the uh, Slovenska Naroda Galleria. In this uh, in this project, um, so we we provided uh, more than four hundred and fifty prints um, uh, from from this period, and this was all also a high resolution uh, digital record. I mean re uh, images, and uh, so we provided um, uh, prints um, uh, such well known prints like uh, La Plante, as his application ornamental by Eugène Grassi, a French designer and um, and artist uh, from from the period and um, in parallel uh, we uh, provided uh, some designs by a Hungarian artist um, a designer and professor Istvan Gruch and his pupils uh, from the same from the same period just for a, a comparison comparison yes so 
And our collection was highlighted as an invited guest of the project between 20th and 26th of March 2017. And during this week, a blog post was published on Europeana about the graphic inspiration uh, of Arnubu and uh, so the public could, could also be read during uh, that week. So uh, it is called, and the title was um, Nature and uh, Folk Art in Hungary and Arnubu. So for us, it was a really, really, really a huge result. And um, I can definitely say that we could thank this cooperation and contribution to, to the contents provided previously uh, in the framework um, of the Athena Plus project. So the second, um, the second benefit um, at international level is that um, um, our collection became known for a wider European public and not just European public. Um, and uh, par paradoxically, uh, it has become more known than other much, much bigger Hungarian real museum collections who have no aggregated records published on this uh, platform on Europeana. So, so we really felt uh, the impact and the benefit um, um, of this content providing. And not just uh, at uh, international level, but uh, we also felt um, uh, at national level as well. Uh, since uh, we could channel uh, our collection to the Hungarian historical and art historical research project, um, of which uh, the most remarkable was uh, the research of uh, the reconstruction, hist the, the construction history of um, the Hungarian parliament um, uh, building. So where we could provide remarkable architectural and ornamental prints for uh, for uh, research purpose, purposes, so as well. So uh, for us, it was a, a really a huge breakthrough, and I hope that so we so we have some some more some more possibility to 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 continue uh, sharing our content on Europeana in, in a kind of, um, in some EU project. So thank you very much for your attention. So, and if you have any question, maybe questions and answer at the end of the webinar. Okay, thank you, uh, okay. Julia. Thank you for your contribution and your beautiful collection. Then uh, I will give uh, the floor to our third speaker, uh, our historical partner, uh, which is uh, Maria Zlivinska, which will tell uh, the experience of a research uh, association. Uh, Maria Zlivinska is the director of the International Center for Information Management System and Services. We know this center as ECIMS, which is based in Turun, uh, Poland, and is very active in projects dealing with cultural heritage and education. Please, Maria. Okay, thank you very much. And hello to everybody. Uh, I enjoyed very much the previous presentation of my colleagues from Hungary and Slovenia. Unfortunately, I will not have so beautiful presentation. Uh, I will only have a speech and I hope you find my speech worth to listen to. I represent this research association. Uh, and our experience of work with Europeana is twofolded. And I would like to present this experience with you. Actually, we don't have the physical collections. We are rather repository. And let me start with our experience as the content delivery institution. As I calculated for the purpose of this uh, presentation, this webinar, we have delivered to Europeana working in a number of European projects about 91,000 items. Among them are about 8,000 uh, items. There are old photographs postcards and archival documents, which we collected from the private owners. 
and our um, experts digitize them. So we do not possess these documents. These are still at private collections, but we have the digital uh, images. Uh, which are based on our website. It's called Library of Private Collections, and 8,000 of them were delivered to Europeana. Um, maybe I would like to share with you one of the interesting experience, because we delivered from the private collection also materials, photographs taken in Harbin. Harbin is Chinese city established by Polish engineers in 19th century. Uh, these engineers built the East China Railway at that time. And thanks to sending to Europeana these documents, we got a request from ladies employed by uh, Czech Republic Senate. She uh, found out on the picture, on the photograph, the older brother of her grandfather and asked for uh, establishing connection between the owner of this photograph. So we contacted to the old lady who used to live in Harbin and who uh, donated us her collection. And it appeared that the man on the photograph was her second husband. So we made a connection between countries, uh, started in China, actually, in Harbin, and the ladies contacted too. And as far as we know, they also met face to face and they wanted to write a book about their experience. So this is a value uh, of the delivery to Europeana collection from private owners. And of course, we are getting all the time many uh, inquiries for sharing uh, with uh, them the content from uh, these uh, private collections. There are people who do the research, who want to use uh, some photographs for publication, for education, uh, for exhibitions. Just recently from the other town, people uh, organized an exhibition on the street and the uh, um, borrowed from us uh, quite many uh, items. The other part of the collection which we delivered to Europeana, there are born digital photographs. And there are mostly photographs uh, dealing with architecture. So the users of these uh, collections, there are mostly fine art uh, students and researchers who are very interested in getting access to these resources because they can uh, see the details of architecture. Uh, they are coming sometimes directly to our website or sometimes just through Europeana, uh, registering on our website and had uh, high resolution um, materials to uh, consult. One of the unique also requests we got for uh, the contemporary uh, pictures. It was a request from oh, from the publishing house uh, from the USA. Uh, they um, prepared a book about uh, theory of um, world uh, literature and found out on our collection 
a picture by a 19th century artist, Stanislav Bespiański, and ask for this picture for their um, cover, uh, front cover of the book. So, of course, we lent them, we gave them access to a high resolution of the picture, just free of charge. But the other experience we have with Europeana, um, it concerns with using Europeana resources, not giving, but using all available uh, resources. In the last few years, we, are, we have been working with students from the high schools on creation uh, of virtual exhibitions. This was possible thanks to the Athena project where the movie or software uh, prepared by uh, the Italian company was a result of this project. So we still use this software uh, to work with the students and they appreciate this tool. So when working with the students, just let me point out one example also. Uh, we created till now about 30 uh, virtual exhibitions, but one was really uh, very interesting because um, one team student decided to create an exhibition devoted to their school patron, and it was Michał Elviro Andrioli. It was an artist uh, born in 19th century, actually the illustrator, quite famous at the time. So he was born in Vilnius, uh, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth under Russian partition at that time. And because of his connections with uh, Italy, his father was Italian, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he traveled to Italy and had such connection. But as artists of international renown in the 19th century, he worked also in Paris. Uh, he worked for the famous magazine Le Figaro. Excuse me. So when working on this uh, exhibition, with the students, of course, uh, we uh, found out all Polish materials and we used them after selection on our exhibition, but after that we consulted European resources. <coughs> Sorry. Um, when looking for uh, Europeana resources, we found a very unique picture by Andrioli, available in Lithuanian Museum. And of course, we found also French materials because he used to work for uh, a French magazine. Unfortunately, we did not find Italian materials. Even we know that at the town of his father's birth, Bretonico, there is a street devoted to Michael Elviro Andrioli, and they also have in the town hall an exhibition devoted to him. But no Italian materials in European. Sorry, we are waiting for this. And recently, we were uh, included into the project Crowd School, where we work uh, with the students also. It's the Erasmus uh, Plus funded project. Uh, we have a school from the south of Poland where we teach architecture. And the partner, the close partner for the Polish school is Italian Liceo Artistico from Bologna. Uh, so we are looking now for materials which can support education 
to the students. Uh, in our case, we will be looking and have already started with searching for materials devoted to architecture. So we found quite many information, quite many items in Europeana devoted to architecture. But we have some problems. And like this now, I would like to point out the problems which uh, we can see when looking for Europeana materials. So when searching for architecture in three languages, Polish, Italian, and English, we found out that the result at each language is different. So we think there should be a thesauri, a multilingual a possibility to join all these um, keywords to have the similar uh, materials uh, from when searching at each language. The other problem we experience with when searching Europeana, there is rather poor quality of digital copies, unfortunately. In the case of architecture, uh, when we are getting materials from Europeana, it's fine to see the shape of the building and to see the location of the building, but it's not possible to see the details which are important in a case of architecture. Julia showed how many details of architecture they collected, but uh, from the European resources, it's not possible to to have uh, access to, to these details. Um, another problem uh, we have uh, with European materials, oh, there are inaccurately described usage rights. Many of the items we found out devoted to architecture uh, have copyright restriction. When we consulted the uh, website, uh, the institution uh, that delivered uh, these items, we found a different information. Quite many, there were uh, materials in public domain, or in some cases, uh, the uh, information about copyright was very different from this what, what was uh, set up on Europeana. Um, what else? Among the materials provided by the uh, institutions, sometimes we could not uh, find uh, uh, these items, these objects we wanted to download. For example, audiovisual library of the European Commission delivered some materials. These were in low resolution, but anyway, we wanted to download uh, some of them and the download function was disabled. When we wanted to check the um, website of the audiovisual library, we got a link to, I don't remember where, but probably to the European Commission. Uh, definitely not to the items we were interested in. So it's another problem we found out with European materials. Um, what else? So, actually, I I describe. I don't want to go to yeah. the uh, particular um, cases, but I think we should start the serious work on uh, improvement of these materials which have already been uploaded to European.
Okay. Thank you, uh, Maria. Um, so um, now, uh, uh, in this case, uh, I will add uh, a presentation uh, myself, uh, in, um, but not in the quality of a museo coordinator, but in the quality of a member of a very small cultural association uh, based uh, in Rome. And uh, I want to uh, share with you uh, our experience in uh, um, sharing only uh, 100 items uh, with uh, Europeana. And uh, it is perfect, uh, this presentation about uh, the last sentence of uh, uh, Maria. Uh, just uh, a few words about uh, this association. Uh, its uh, name is Cote Goit. Uh, Whose, uh, its activities and projects are targeted to citizens and schools. Uh, the activities are the promotion of uh, working for the well-being of health and spirit, make the territory known, design of thematic and multidisciplinary cultural itineraries, design and promotion of historical and cultural paths, education activities and project uh, with the schools. Um, so we are not, uh, let, let's say, like a museum, but we are a cultural association. We have a small documentation center. We make a lot of pictures. And uh, among uh, all these activities, we have also a collection of a lot of images of uh, street art. In particular, uh, we have 25,000 images of street art in Rome that we have collected uh, during the last uh, um, 15 years. Uh, of course, uh, not, uh, in, yes, uh, they are digital images, but uh, we have um, a very small, let's say, digital library. But uh, one year ago, we decided to uh, also because I was involved in the association to try the experiment to share 100 images uh, with the Europeana to give more visibility for the association, more visibility to the Italian street art and uh, the challenge to see if we were able to achieve this result with very poor uh, technology. Uh, in fact, um, this association has a very, very old uh, website with a, an old technology, but uh, at the moment uh, we can't uh, change the website because it is also connected with a web app uh, connected to the smartphone, so we don't want to change. It is too expensive for us, but uh, anyway, this uh, technology, uh, besides uh, the, the, the management of the website, uh, has also the possibility of having a, a small uh, digital library where you can upload a catalog of images with uh, several uh, uh, the most important uh, metadata. So we treated uh, the images of, um, of uh, the street art uh, like a work of art uh, with the usual metadata which are used to catalog uh, an, art, uh, an art work. This is uh, what we see on the, on the website, which is in Italian, the main uh, metadata uh, the, and the description, um, and, uh, no, a, a main uh, image and then other image collect, connected to the first one. So when uh, we had to try to uh, aggregate the content for Europeana, uh, we did really a very artisanal work. What we did, we export the data, we prepared an Excel uh, files uh, with all the data that the, we had in our uh, digital uh, uh, library and then uh, we um, we added some columns with uh, the ADM mandatory fields which were not included in our previous card and at the end uh, we added some um, columns in these Excel files where uh, we could enrich the data and in fact we enriched the, the subject the place and the time span. We uh, enrich the subject with the AT, the place with the geoname, and the time span with uh, Wikidata. Then, of course, we sign the, the signature and we aggregate the date with Museo.
which was the result. Now we are in uh, Europeana with this 100 object. We delivered the, uh, the objects in the CC0 um, CC BY license because at least we wanted the source, uh, even if we guarantee the, the reuse. Uh, here we have, uh, we see that in Europeana we have. Um, the, 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 the image, then we have the creator, the argument, the type of objects, and the entire uh, card, and uh, even the geolocalization, because we used the geoname, which was the which was the result. The result was very good because the metadata, uh, the, the tire in metadata was C, and you know that uh, the maximum is D. While for the digital resources, uh, the metadata, uh, the, the tire was for, which is uh, the maximum. So uh, in a very artisanal uh, way, we could reach a very high, uh, a very high uh, uh, result. Um, the visibility was immediately given by Europeana, even if it is, was a small collection and uh, they already used our images in uh, some uh, newsletters or, uh, or uh, some uh, communication uh, material. And for us, the main, uh, um, the main benefit uh, was, first of all, uh, this, uh, this challenge uh, to see if we were able to reach uh, uh, such uh, such a result, but uh, um, it was uh, even if they were only uh, 100 objects, it was quite a lot of work for a small association. But uh, uh, I see that uh, if really you work on the on the quality, then um, you reach uh, for, for a certain a certain result uh, in terms of quality. Um, what, uh, what I can say is that uh, from my point of view, um, even if we reach, uh, especially for the subject, uh, even if we reach uh, the data with the AT, I don't think it is sufficient. Uh, and we now are proposing to reach the, the data with the Wikidata because this is much more multilingual and is it reached day by day. And I am seeing that... Uh, Europeana is also embracing uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, uh, the, the, this, uh, this idea. So, uh, okay, now I try to uh, close my connection and uh, I give the floor uh, to our last presentation, uh, which is uh, uh, Corinne. Uh, Stein Schneiser, I never can tell her name, which is the coordinator of the Michael Culture Association and who wants to tell us about the MEMEX project. Corinne, you are there? Yes, 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 sorry. Yes, okay. <laughs> Do you see my presentation? Yes, yes, perhaps yeah. you have the presentation mode. Yeah, um, but do you see? Do you yes, see? yes, we see. We yes. see. Okay, okay. So, uh, hello, everybody. I'm happy to see you <laughs> all. Um, yeah, so it's a very different presentation because uh, um, this presentation is more an example of the indirect impact or indirect benefit, let's say, of sharing your contents uh, on, on Europeana um, and uh, how publishing raises also the opportunity uh, for valoriz valorization through a European projects, uh, targeting citizens or professional communities. Uh, Maria, you already uh, spoke uh, quickly about the Erasmus Plus project. Um, and thanks. And, and um, I, would, I would just like to show the example of an ongoing project, MEMEX, Memories and Experiences for Inclusive Digital Storytelling. It's an ongoing uh, project supported by the Horizon 2020 uh, program. 
it's a three years program so project so we are at the, at the middle let's say and it's coordinated by the instituto italiano di tecnologica and michael culture uh, uh, is a partner both as a museum aggregator and also as um, the, the, the co-organizator of the pilot uh, in Paris. Um, so uh, MEMEX uh, is a project uh, uh, about the promotion of social cohesion and cultural diversity between communities at risk of uh, social exclusion through uh, best practices, policies, and collaborative heritage-related ICT tools. So the, 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 the two pillars are the social goal and the technological goal. And the aim is um, to show how uh, cultural heritage, and, in, and including digital cultural heritage, uh, with the support of ICT uh, collaborative tools to could contribute to the inclusion um, of uh, communities at risk uh, of populations at risk of um, of exclusions. So it's um, the idea is to build uh, both a methodology, uh, an approach uh, based on the storytelling, and a dedicated uh, memex application, a mobile application, um, aiming uh, to uh, support the, the storytelling created by uh, inhabitants, citizens, with or without the, the support of, uh, let's say, mediators. It can be GLAMS, it can be uh, social uh, organizations. So, um, we we have uh, three uh, pilots, uh, so one pilot in Barcelona, and uh, the targeted community are the migrant women. Um, in Paris, uh, the, the the community, the targeted community, is in fact the inhabitants uh, of uh, one district, uh, which is a priority uh, neighborhood of Paris priority district, in fact. And in, in Lisbon, um, we have a community, a targeted community who is uh, related to all the migrations uh, in, in Lisbon. So the idea of this project, in fact, is uh, to uh, co-create uh, stories um by the is to co-create this application the memex application and uh stories um by the citizens and um it's uh it, it those stories will be a mix of uh uh historical archives or testimonies and new uh uh, digital uh, content because the inhabitants are invited through several workshops um, to write stories, to prepare stories so um, about their uh, history in the area of each pilot, about the, 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 their origins if they come from another country, um, it can be stories about the, I mean, the architecture, the buildings, or it can be uh, stories about some personal uh, cultural heritage, for example, cooking or or um, music or whatever. And then um, the, the the process is that, in fact, we will uh, support the preparation of those stories. And by the end, they will create a digital um, story and they will uh, add it on the Memex application. And it will be a mix, in fact, um, of uh, archives, as I told you, a text and new content and uh, video, pictures, etc. Uh, they will um, they will prepare. So then we will have this uh, Memex application. And uh, it will uh, build, in fact, on a knowledge graph localization and uh, augmented reality. So the idea is that by the end of the project, the, the Mimex app will allow the, any citizens uh, 
to uh, write history and inject it on this uh, on this application. And the idea is to be able also to uh, ingest or to use reuse content from um, databases, from digital uh, cultural uh, heritage databases, and uh, including from Europeana. And this is uh, one of the very important aspects uh, of the of the project is that, in fact, um, this project is a real um, added value for, for the, 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 the collection published on Europeana, because, in fact, in each country, uh, first, um, uh, each pilot partner has uh, uh, identified uh, on Europeana and other uh, database, but many on Europeana, uh, some data that are related to each uh, uh, pilot area. So uh, data related to Paris, uh, to Lisbon, to Barcelona, but also data related to uh, topics such as uh, migrants or foods or whatever. And uh, those, um, those uh, identified data uh, will be presented to each participant in each pilot in order to give them some example of a cultural heritage content. The second aspect is that in each pilot, um, the, the, the partners, the different partners, organized uh, some a kind of capacity building uh, workshop for the inhabitants, but also for the local um, cultural and social organizations and for uh, policymakers. Uh, about uh, digital cultural heritage. And uh, for uh, each workshop, in fact, we invite the participants to identify uh, the data, uh, content, or collections related to the story they want to prepare for the, for the project. And um, so we... we, we Concerning Europeana, for example, in Paris, we organized a specific session about uh, how to find archives, how to find uh, uh, elements related to, to topics that are in interest for you, that are for interest for you. And then um, it has been an opportunity, in fact, to, to, to get the awareness about ex the existence of Europeana because first um, the, the, the citizens were not uh, aware about uh, Europeana um, and uh, also to, to then they, 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 they searched for some data and then they discovered several uh, collections published on Europeana and then in fact uh, after we asked them to do some homework let's say and, and then it, they, they identified on Europeana several um, data and, and they presented to the other uh, participants during the, 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 the another uh, workshop. And then, thanks to this, they discovered not, not only Europeana, but then they went directly to the content providers uh, or website or database, etc. Uh, in order to know more about each uh, glance uh, who published um, collections. So the, this example, this very short example, just to show that in fact, publishing on Europeana, there is the, the let's say, immediate added value because your collections are accessible, are visible, but there is also this non-direct, let's say, benefit that it's a really great opportunity, in fact, um, for uh, 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 get the awareness or make your collection visible through European projects. And uh, of course, everything is not perfect. <laughs> uh, of course, for example, when you, you find an interesting data, then you see that there is no systematic translation. So we know that this point, the multilingualism uh, uh, point is, 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 uh, is very important. And, and in Europeana, we have to improve it because we, we need this multilingualism. 
and uh, but it's um, it's very very uh, added uh, added value. So that that was just a very quick example. Uh, if you you want to know more about the project and and about uh, uh, the use of the data, you can go to see the, the on the website uh, the the presentation of the project and. Uh, uh, we will uh, disseminate information when we will have uh, um, story pu stories published on this uh, Memex uh, application. And for sure, we also uh, take in consideration the copyright, uh, the, li the li license issues, uh, and uh, because this is an important point um, concerning the reuse or not of, of data. And uh, European projects are, and Europeana are also a good uh, um, opportunity to speak about those issues with the professionals or citizens. So that's it. Okay, thank you, Corinne. I think that besides presenting Memex, you have also quite made like a sort of conclusion, but I think it was very interesting either to see this, all the big or little institutions who benefited from sharing content with the Europeana, but also an example of reusing content. Uh, I don't know if uh, you want to still uh, comment. We have still five minutes. If the, if the other participants want to make uh, some questions or the speakers want uh, to add uh, something, anyway, I think that the, the webinar was very successful and interesting for all of us. Please. Um, hello, everyone. Um... Hello, yes. I was thinking about you. I was thinking, well, maybe Henning will react. <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's only five minutes left, but I, I, I could. Sorry, sorry Henning. Henning, you present who you are because perhaps not everybody knows oh, yeah. who you are. Oh, okay. Sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, Henning I'm working for the Ibana Foundation in The Hague. And yeah, I'm, I'm responsible for, yeah, basically the work with all the data partners across Europe, including Museo, being one of the um, main partners in the uh, Yopana initiative. And I, yeah, I could respond to a couple of the problems that both um, Maria and, and also uh, Vesna have, have brought up. If you, if you, if you want me, either. Um, of course. Yeah. Um, maybe to keep it short um, for, for now, but I can also elaborate on this maybe later on and offline. Um, uh, first of all, yeah, thanks for these, these comments. None of these comments are really new to us, new to me. Um, so, uh, I, I think the, 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 the main point from Vesna about the, the the topics is something that uh, we are also aware that there are, there are some inconsistencies in how the current semantic collections are uh, composed, and we are working on a different concept of how to uh, do this better in the future. That's not certainly something we have on our agenda, but it's not an easy one, so so it takes a bit of time. Uh, changing data like manually without a resubmission, that's something that is not possible and uh, we also don't consider to be uh, possible. So to also keep the integrity of the data, it's, it's, we always prefer that the data are uh, submitted uh, again and processed again uh, with all the fixes being in place uh, across the aggregation chain. Um, that's something I want to to say for Maria, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting to hear uh, you speaking from maybe yeah a, a user perspective. Um, so so to say, what your experiences are when you talk about uh, data quality, uh, which is um, interesting because that's already for us also a very important thing. I mean, I, I don't know 
all of the examples, then maybe you can share some of them with, with me uh, so I can have a specific look on um, uh, what, uh, where you like the architectural material you mentioned, where you, you see that the quality is, is not good enough. I could have a look where that is from to see what the options are. Also for the language uh, queries you have run, would be interesting to see those examples to, to find out like um, what the underlying problem is of, of this. So at least I would be interested, even if you didn't went into the detail on uh, the specific um, problems, I would be interested in seeing some examples to to also get to the to the bottom of wh where this comes from and what the options are to to, to fix this. Um, so I would be happy seeing a few examples. If you can send them to me, I'm, I can investigate it further. Maybe yeah, I'll send you. Mm -hmm. Okay, perhaps to Vesna, uh, I think that if uh, you go in contact uh, with us, uh, with me and Marco, perhaps uh, some of the problems uh, could be solved, I think, uh, to improve uh, the right channel uh, where you are. I think uh, that uh, we can help you. Uh, and so we will be in contact in the next days. Okay. Yeah. So I think it is uh, perfectly 6.30. I don't know if you have uh, other comments. We can uh, have uh, five more minutes. Uh, otherwise, uh, we thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, Maria Teresa, I can comment uh, your presentation just shortly. Yes. Uh, I read at some newspaper, I don't remember which one, that Maria Teresa is called Graffiti Queen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, see. Do you know about it? Yeah, yeah, it's like a hobby that uh, becomes also a little bit of work from time to time because mm -hmm. I can capitalize it uh, in many in many places, especially in education. And uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. So congratulations. Thank you, Maria. Okay. So thank you and hope to see you in uh, some of the next uh, uh, activities we organize uh, with the Nikhil Association and uh, thank you to all the participants.